Real music, real interviews, real information. That's why we call it Real Gospel with the x man My friend Calvin Bridges and his song Still Away. This is Real Gospel.
Tell Gospel is the place where God gets the glory and artists get the opportunity to tell their story. I'm honored to have this man of God, this minister of music as myself, but in a different capacity, a Calvin Bridges. Welcome to Real Gospel. Thank you, my brother X-Man. Praise the Lord for you and hello to your audience. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So where are you calling us from? Where are you at? I'm calling you from Chicago, Illinois. This Chateau. is the first place from gospel music. Okay, okay. South side, north side, west side, east side. South side. Okay. South side, baby. All right, that's what I'm talking about. So when is the, uh, how, how are they coming along with the uh, President Obama Library there? Do you know? Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be open in 2020. As a matter of fact, we had some representatives at our church uh, about a month ago or so. They're okay. sharing the, the news is coming up in the uh, Jackson Park area. And uh, we praise the Lord. It's going to be on the south side. and. It's, yeah. uh, it looks like it's going to be a tremendous, tremendous project, and we're praying that it will bring lots of economic growth to our city and to the south side of Chicago. Oh, you already know it will. Tickets probably sold out already. <laughs> well, as I'm, I'm sure saying. for a minute, anyway. <laughs> yep, yep. So anyway, uh, it's good to have you on with us. And so for listeners who don't know a whole lot about you, they, we, we know, they know now that you're from the south side of Chicago. And so tell them a little bit about how you came into the knowledge of the Lord. How did you first discover that, hey, God, God is my Lord and Savior, just in case somebody just got saved yesterday and they're learning a whole lot about gospel music because they've been on the secular side of things for quite some time. So fill us in. All right, my brother. Well, that's a, a, um, an, an, an intricate request. But let me just start here. Uh, I met the Lord many years ago as a, as a youngster. But, you know, as we live and we grow, we grow into many things. But in my early 20s, I was at church one Sunday morning on the organ, and I heard the pastor say that when we pray, we talk to God. But when we read the Bible, God speaks to us. That one single statement changed my whole life because it really started me to reading the Bible for myself and not just going through the motions or going through the motions of church every week. But I really began to seek the Lord to, because I was curious. I said, hmm, what is God saying to me what has God got to say to me because I've never heard it put that way man and uh, I started reading the Bible I was playing for a secular artist as well at that time and on breaks man on breaks at the at some of the clubs I would read the Bible instead of hang out because it was just that interesting to me so uh, my story is a long and involved one because uh, in my early years I started out in secular music but I've always been connected to the church but that relationship really, really changed and turned when I started reading the Bible because it was at that time I also told the Lord, I said, the greatest gift you've given to me is my voice. So I will use that for your glory. So I stopped singing secular back then and uh, I started singing only exclusively gospel. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll say this to anybody who's listening, who's been on the secular side, who may be on the secular side. Not one day of my life, of my rich, long life, have I ever had a regret for making that decision because God truly loves and cares for his own. I have seen many of my contemporaries really hit the big time. They lived fast. They're gone now. Uh, so many of my contemporaries who are still here, man. Uh, I'm an old man now, but I give God praise that God has kept me and preserved me. And uh, I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for that. So I want to encourage somebody's heart that's on the fence. Or if you've been thinking or you're struggling or you're seeking or you don't really know what, uh, what the next step to take in life is, I encourage you to develop, to receive Jesus Christ into your heart and to, de to develop a relationship with him. And the development part is as important as receiving him. Because for so many years, you know, I received him, but I wasn't developing a relationship. So I didn't know how precious your walk is. Once you begin to develop your walk, it's just like with anyone else in the natural. The more you know a person, the more comfortable you are with them, the more you grow to love them. And when you start talking about a love relationship, then you're talking about benefits. And that's the greatest thing about the relationship with Jesus Christ are the benefits. For he doesn't give like the world gives. I just uh, told a friend, he's the only one who knows everything about me, and he still loves me. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> hey, you are, you are literally uh, bringing a message, and that's, that's awesome. That's what the listeners need to hear. You know, there's someone out there 
um, probably in the church choir, in the church praise team right now, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe a musician uh, doing a little mm -hmm. bit of both. And so it, it always helps to know uh, another person's testimony. You know, the scripture said we overcome by the power of a testimony, but also by That's the right. uh, power of other people, other person's testimonies. And so for someone to have heard you said that you've never regretted one day uh, huh. singing for the Lord and turning down the secular uh, world, uh, you know, spiritually elaborate on that for a second, because, you know, it's tough. It's, you know, when you got to pay the bills and, you know, and, and playing here and there is sort of, you know, helping you do what you have to do. Um, mm -hmm. Can you touch on that for somebody who is sort of in that area? Maybe they're not contemplating it just yet in terms of having left the choir to go pursue that. Mm -hmm. But there's someone listening right now who is sort of stuck in, 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 in both worlds like that. Well, you know, I will say this. It is it is it is a challenge however it really depends it's a heart matter brother because where your heart is there your treasure is also and at that point in my life you know i had both worlds available to me and uh, i read a scripture in the proverbs i'm paraphrasing I'm, i can't quote it directly and he was in the king james so i'm just going to tell you what it meant to me I was working in Philadelphia at a very prominent recording label as a writer, and uh, they were, I was offered a recording contract, and I was uh, doing really well there. And the scripture spoke in Proverbs, it says, Beware of the king when he sits his dainties before you, because it will surely be required of you in the end. And man, that thing shook mm. me to the core. i tell you why. Because I'm just one of them brothers. I've been an independent artist for the last 21 or 30 years now. Uh, because it's really hard for me to belong to people. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> when somebody else is pulling your cord, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's another kind of feeling. It's another kind of thing. So that drew me from really wanting to be owned or controlled mm -hmm. by another entity or an individual. Okay, with that being said, it's a matter of trust. And I believe God... I mean, I've always believed God, but when I look at the world and when I look at people, you know, my mother taught me that your word is your bond. And I can look at so many people in life, in all areas and aspects of life. That don't mean nothing to them. People will look at you and look in your face, and I'm talking about Christian people, or supposed to be Christian people, and lie to you just like they would, just like a, a stranger on the street. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't say that to necessarily indict people, but what I do say is that the Bible teaches us not to be a fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so when you open up your understanding, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. So in all of you, get and get an understanding. So when you understand that, that's why I trust God more than I trust anything or anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. because I've been in situations, brother, I just have to testify quickly in a sentence. Mm -hmm. I've been in situations where people have tried to dig ditches for me, or people withheld opportunities that they could have blessed me with. Mm -hmm. But God turned around some years later and used those same people to bless me. Mm -hmm. Because when I wanted to go off and be crazy about it, the Lord set me down and said, tell me about it, don't tell them. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk to God about it, and when I steal my spirit and humble my heart before him, God turned that thing around, and some of those same people have blessed me. I've been doing international music ministry for the last 21 years, and some of those same people that did me that way, God used to bless me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, you can't be God given. You can't no be matter God given. That is so, so true. I've said a lot of words. The <laughs> thing I want to say most of all is trust. Mm -hmm. If you will trust God, to do what his word says he would do no good thing would he withhold from you that he gives you power to get wealth that i know the plans that i that I've, i i think of you say of the lord if you believe the scriptures of what god has said over your life and you embrace them there's a, ter a greek term that my bishop horace earl smith apostolic faith church where mm -hmm. i'm a member has taught us kata lambano and it's a greek term it means to seize it means to take possession mm -hmm. if we take possession of the word and own that thing. God will move in our lives. I feel God in this place. Why you got me in here preaching this moment? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit, my brother. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, the song "Steal Away." What's the inspiration behind this song? Oh man, "Steal Away." The inspiration here is that again, God has blessed me to do international music ministry, and so often in life, for so many churches all over the world. 
especially in America as well. A lot of them are empty on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. That's because relationship is poor. Still away says no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, when you're in trouble, all you got to do is close your eyes and steal away. God is always there. Jesus, Jesus is always near us. As a matter of fact, his Holy Spirit presence lives in us. He's waiting for us to interact with him. He's waiting for us to develop that relationship. And then, you know, I got tickled after I wrote it. I wrote it. I, I write the way God gives it to me, so I don't make any excuses for it. But I know a lot of the young people don't know nothing about a telephone or a dial tone or operator assistance and all that sort of stuff. But my song talks about all of those things. So uh, the name of my full project is going to be called Gospel Church Generations because uh, I did a live project for the first time in 10 years, and I really wanted to reach generations of, of gospel music enthusiasts. And I'm just so elated because gospel music is loved and embraced all over the world. And with this song, I want people to know about their relationship. You might go to a church that that stand up and sit down and stand up and sit down and you read everything from a piece of paper and the, and the minister uh, gets up and says some words or sings some words and you get up and respond to them, but it's kind of robotic, it's, it's ritualistic. I want people to know through this song that you don't need nobody else's help, that you can go to God for yourself. You can close your eyes and steal away. And what a blessing it is because he'll meet us in a secret place. He always meets us. We never go to him and it's a miss. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, I will in no way turn out. I will in no way turn away. So if we reach out to him in a sincere heart, he's always there for us. That's the message, brother. He's always there. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm willing to bet people just fall in when you minister live, when you're in concert, when you when you do things, uh, you just sort of probably just usher in the presence of the Lord and people just sort of just fall in. You just uh, you well, probably, I can't do nothing yeah. without him. I can't do nothing without him. <laughs> if I don't lift him up, if I don't give him the praise, honor, and the glory, mm -hmm. I have been a failure. Yeah. Uh, God has blessed me so much in my life. God has blessed me with so many opportunities to travel the world, to interact with different cultures, to embrace different cultures and peoples of different lifestyles, that uh, I have to lift the name of Jesus. And I don't, it ain't just got to be me. Whoever will lift the name of Jesus, he says, when two or three come together and are touching and agreeing, I'm in your midst. You know, that's the biggest thing that, 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 that is an amazement to me in this world, is that we read the Bible but so many Christians who read the Bible don't believe the Bible. We read the words, but we don't believe what it says. And it's a living book. The impact is so great. It's a living book. So when, when, when he says, if we come together just as we are now, he will come into our midst. And I know you feel his presence because I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not only do you and I feel his presence, but everybody who will listen to this interview, everybody who will, who, who, who's seeking and God will draw, they're going to be blessed. Amen. Because, I mean, that's just that's just how he rolls. <laughs> Amen. I am definitely going to have to have you back, my brother, because you are speaking a word. Woo! God's presence is covering his people all over the globe where they're listening to this interview at. But just as importantly, uh, as you are his vessel, as we wrap up right now, how can the listeners find out more information about you, uh, your CD project? Just reach Calvin Bridges. You can reach me at Calvin Bridges, one word, dot O-R-G. That's my website, CalvinBridges.org. All of my music is available on all of the online uh, retailers. Anyone you go to, just put in my name. The new song is Steal Away. S-T-E-A-L. Steal Away. And uh, you can get that there. And I need, I need downloads, brother. Uh, I've been an independent artist for 20 years, and yeah. this is a single that I've released. Okay. So I'm asking you to spend a dollar twenty-nine, ninety-nine cents, whatever it is, <laughs> to do the download because Coffee I really money. want this song to reach a global audience and to hit the airwaves with some power. And in order to do that, I need to have retail presence. So I'm really asking any supporters to do that. If you're being blessed by my music, blessed by this interview, and brother, I got to tell you real quick. I know a lot of people don't know nothing about me, but there's a little song that you might have grown up on that says, Makes no difference what the problem Yes, I, I can take. Yeah, there, well, that's why you sing it, but I got you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote yeah. that years ago. I wow. wrote that album years ago. Wow. And I wrote her uh, hit, Spread the Word, and we did that at the Grammys. 
back in the 1980s, we did that live at the Grammys. So I've been writing for a lot of years. I've been ministering for a lot of years. But God has had me hidden until such a time as this. So I'm giving God the praise that uh, new doors are opening, especially here in America. I have been touring Europe and Africa for the last 20 years every year. And God is opening the door for new countries. But I'm really excited to do more here in America because we really need it now. Our young people are crying out for guidance and for coverings. And, you know, the Bible says a child shall lead them. So I'm telling you again, one more time, the word of God is true. I'm just so proud of the youth. I pray a covering over them for what they're doing and standing up for gun control. And we're praying down these demonic forces that refuse to bow to the will of the Lord and that refuse to bow to the will of the people. But power belongs to God. That was my post today on Facebook. Power belongs to God. So we're going to see a change yes, we here are. in America. Yes, we are. And I'm just excited about what God is doing yes. and that we are part of his end time plan. Amen. 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 Listen, Gavin, I'm definitely going to have to have you back. And uh, by the way, uh, if you want him to come minister in song at your ministry, you just heard why. And if you want him to come bring a spoken word to your ministry, you just heard why. The anointed man of God himself, Calvin Bridges, thank you so much for joining us in World Gospel. And we look forward. Thank you so much. To, yes. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your airwaves and your airtime and your audience with me. I want to say God bless you and God favor you. www.calvinbridges.org org or anywhere online you put my name in you'll find me because i want to be found <laughs> <laughs> amen god bless you my brother god bless you brother and thank you again you're listening to real gospel with the x-man